Okay, welcome to the tutorial for citations and referencing in APA format. If you're looking for how to format the main body of your paper, you can check out the other video. So the most important thing about citations and references is that you have to do them. Every single time you make a reference to someone else's ideas, you must, must, must provide a full reference. In general, at this level, more of your sentences should have citations than not. In terms of the format, there are two major uh, things to think about when doing references. The first is the in-text part of the citation, and the second is the references that are going to be in the reference section. We'll do the in-text citation part first, and then in a minute we'll go over the references section. So within the text, when you're paraphrasing the words of others, you simply include the author and date after that. So if you are including them uh, after the text, if you're not incorporating the author as part of the text, then you simply put the author, comma, year of publication in parentheses. Then if you are including the author in the text, then the author comes outside of the parentheses because he's part of the sentence, he or she is part of the sentence, and then just the date is in parentheses. If an idea came from two sources, then you're going to put them both in parentheses with the author, author's last name, comma, date, separate, but they'll be separated by a semicolon. Now when you're citing a work that, gets, that has more than one author, it gets a touch complicated. When your work has uh, two authors, in, parenth in parentheses you put both authors' names separated by an ampersand in the order uh, that they're listed on the paper. If they're outside of the parentheses, they get the word and instead of an ampersand. Now, if your work has three to five authors, then the first time you cite that paper, you list all the authors in the order that they're listed on the paper, separated by a comma and then before the last one an ampersand, and then of course comma and the date. Every other time you cite that same paper, you just put the first author's last name, followed by a comma and the words et al. Um, then comma and the year. If your paper has more than six authors, then you use this et al format from the beginning rather than listing all the authors the first time. If you have two authors with the same last name, then you're going to put their first initial to help distinguish between them. If you have an author with multiple papers in the same year, then you're going to put after the year, you're going to put the term A uh, for the first one you cite and then the term B for the second one you cite just to distinguish between them. Now that will cover you in most situations but there are a few more unusual ones that may come up for you. For example, sometimes you might want to cite a publication from an organization that doesn't specify authors. If that's the case, then you're just going to cite the, auth the organization as though it was the author. So you put the organization name, comma, year. If another thing that might come up is translated work. If that's the case, then you put uh, you include the you put the author as you normally would, then comma, the date of the original publication slash the date of the year of the translation. If the year of the original publication isn't available, which should really only only happen with ancient ancient texts, then you just put in the translation year, including the word translation. So you're indicating that you're using a translation that was uh, used that year rather than some book by like Phil Socrates. Okay. Now indirect sources are something that may come up if you've read something that refers something else and you want to cite the original idea. Now I want to discourage this. You should look up the original work and find out how they phrased their original idea. But if for whatever reason that's impossible, then you're going to put in the original author of that idea and then comma as cited in the work you actually read's author and year. Now, of course, this is far from an exhaustive list of things you want to include as citations. Um, as always, the actual APA manual can direct you to where you want to go and figure out how to cite exactly what it is you want to cite. Um, APA also maintains a blog which includes some of the trickier situations. Okay, so that's for our paraphrasing. What do we do when you actually want to quote something directly? Well, the good news is that the citation part is pretty much the same. You'll insert the quote and then put the citation afterwards. In parentheses, it's the exact same format, except you're going to have the page number of the quote after the year. Uh, if you have the uh, 
authors is part of the text you're actually going to then split up the year and the page number so that the year is presented immediately after the authors before the quote um, and then the page number is going to be presented after the quote. The main difference with quotes though is that you have to indicate that you're taking direct words from the source. And so the way you do that if it's less than 40 words is just by putting quotation marks around the quoted portion. If it's more than 40 words, then you're going to block it with no quotation marks. You're going to uh, start a new line indenting half an inch from the margin. Everything stays double spaced and otherwise the same format. And as you go, you keep the entire thing lined up with the new margin. If there's a paragraph break within your quote, then you're going to indent again from that new margin. But you probably want to think twice about using a quote so long that it has multiple paragraphs. Okay, and then once we've cited everything, we can go on to the references list, which is going to be at the end of your paper. The references list starts with the word references, which is centered and capitalized, but not bolded, even though, yes, it is a heading. Uh, the reference list is double spaced and uses the same font margins as the body of the text. The main difference format wise is that the reference list, reference list uses a hanging indentation. That means that the first line of entry, every entry is left aligned with the margin and then every subsequent line in the entry is indented half an inch. For APA, you reference everything you cited in text. That means if you, didn't, if you read it but you didn't use any ideas from it and therefore didn't cite it in the text, then you don't include it in the reference list. The reference list is presented in alphabetical order by the first author. If you have multiple papers with the same first author, but different second authors or no second author, then you're going to move to the next author in terms of alphabetization. So you'll start with the ones that are, that are the first author by himself and then the first author with the second author that has the uh, first alphabetized name, etc., etc. If you have two papers by the exact same authors, then, it, then it's going to go by year with the earliest ones happening first and then the second and then the next most recent etc. If you have multiple papers by the same authors in the same year then it gets labeled by A or B in the year parentheses. This A or B of course should also be included in the in-text citation as we just covered. Now for each specific entry the format is going to vary a little bit based on the type of source you're citing but there are a few things that are universal. First you always start with authors names going by the first author presented with their last names and any initials provided. It should go first author's last name comma space first initial period space second initial period comma space and then if you have multiple authors it go it goes on after that in between uh, there should be commas in between uh, authors and then in between the second last author and the last author there's also an ampersand now if you have more than seven authors you're not going to list them all you're going to list the first six and then a dot 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 ampersand and then the final author and that's just to keep things a little more compact. If you're citing an organization then you're going to cite the organization just like it was an author and you're going to put the author there and alphabetize it accordingly. Put the organization as the author and alphabetize it accordingly. Okay so then after the authors comes the year of publication and that's always going to be in parentheses uh, immediately after the authors followed by a period. Okay, so then once we get past the authors and dates, that's when things start to vary a lot more depending on what type of source it is. We'll go through a, common, a couple of common ones, but again, if I don't specifically cover the type of source you want to use, you should look it up in the APA 6 edition. So for journal articles, which is a very common one, after the date you put the title of the article, which is going to be in sentence capitalization, followed by a period. This is going to be followed by the title of the journal, which is going to be in title capitalization and italicized, followed by a comma, and then the volume number and issue number. The volume number is italicized, and the, but the issue number isn't, and the issue number is placed in parentheses. There's another comma after that, and then the page number of the article, or the pages of the article, followed by a period. 
Finally, you put in what's called the DOI. This is new for the APA 6 edition, so you may not have seen it before. But every article should come with a DOI and that should be listed either on your paper or on the website where you retrieve that paper. If for some reason your paper doesn't have a DOI, then you, but you are reading it online, then you need to include the website that you retrieved it from. Another common type of reference is a book. For books, after the year, you're going to put the title in sentence capitalization, but it is italicized. Although if there is a subtitle, that's going to get a capital letter as well. This is going to be followed by a period, then the place of publication, and then a colon, and then the publisher, and then a period. If you're using a translated book, then you put the translators in parentheses after the title of the book, with the word trans there to indicate that they're translators. And then after the publisher, in parentheses, you're going to put the date of the original work. And the way you're just going to say that is original work published and then the year. Now, if you're using a specific chapter in a book rather than a whole book, then you're going to just cite that chapter. And the way you do that is you put the author of the chapter, as you typically would, and then the year of the book publication, and then the title of the chapter in sentence capitalization, not italicized, with a period at the end. Then you're going to say in, then the name of the editor of that book with ed in parentheses, followed by the title of that book in italics but sentence capitalization, and then followed by the pages of that chapter also in parentheses. After that, of course, you'll put the place and place of publication and then the publisher as you typically do for books. Now, if you're using a publication from an organization, then it's similar to a book, except of course uh, the author is going the author of the publication and the publisher are usually the same. So in that case where you would normally put the publisher, you just put author because it's the same as the author. Okay, finally for conference proceedings. If after the date, you're going to include the title of the proceedings in sentence capitalization, followed by the editor of the proceedings, again in, and then the editors labeled ads, then the title of the um, title of the actual proceedings or the overall book in which it was published, uh, followed again by the page numbers of the specific proceedings you're talking about. And then, as always for books, the place of publication, colon, publisher of the proceedings. Now, if you're citing a conference that you attended, but for which there's no published proceedings, then what you're going to want to include, um, then you're going to include the month of the presentation in the date. So in addition to the year, you're going to include the month of the presentation, followed by the title of the presentation in italics, with sentence capitalization, followed by a period. And then what you'll say is, uh, in standard font, paper presented at the Society for, of whatever, so pr paper presented at the name of the conference, okay, and then the place of the conference, followed by a period. If it's in the U.S. or Canada, usually you just put the city and state or province. If it's elsewhere, you should also list the country. Okay, so as I mentioned, there are many, many, many other types of things you can cite, but these are the ones we sort of see the most often. And you should always consult the APA manual if you have any questions or any other specific things you wanted to write about that wasn't here. You can always check the APA manual or other online sources.